Okay, so this is once again the Fails patent plane, Otis A. Smith, and today I have it sharpened up a little bit, so we're going to see if we can't cut some sash, I guess. Um, I'm only going to be doing half of it, so I'm going to do a half sash job. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, I don't have any boards wide or uh, not wide enough, thick enough to do both front and back of the sash. So what I'm going to do is just cut one side and then you'll have to use your imagination on how you would cut the other side. Um, spoiler alert, it's exactly the same way. Uh, just going the opposite direction on the other side of the board. So first thing, we have these little bases here and I'm using the 3 8 inch cutter so 3 8 inch right here and these bases are not 3 8 inch specifically because the idea is what you do is you use the 3 8 inch iron with roughly a I think it measures out at 3 16 of an inch Uh, let's see, sixteenths, one, two, three, yeah, so both the main stock and this auxiliary base are three sixteenths of an inch thick, so you use both of those for the three eighths inch cutter. I did remove the spur just because it was sticking down a little bit, and I wanted to clean these up just a hair, so I just didn't reinstall it. Don't need it because we're going along with the grain. So you just have these two screws here, these bases slot up underneath that, you tighten them down. Pretty simple. And then very similar to an early Stanley 45 or a Stanley 46, you just have kind of this little wedge thing with this wing screw, a little bit of a juggling act. Okay, so that's how you tighten it down. You just put the iron in there and tighten down on that and now what I'm doing is I'm just sighting down to kind of see what kind of a cut I'm gonna get not enough Oop, not that one this guy Typically try to avoid um, hitting steel with steel just because I don't want to mushroom the top of this cutter which it looks like one of the previous owners probably did. Alright, let me just tap that over. So now all I'm doing is I'm just kind of sighting down the plane making sure that I can get enough of a cut uh, quite that I can clear the bases so basically what I'm trying to do is get the iron lined up there we go with the base best that I can so line that up with the outside of the base there all right so now that we've got the well I guess that'd be the rabbit part of it um, next thing is your depth stop so this front rod is rectangular and this little depth stop here has a rectangular profile right in here that fits onto that front rod. So then you can tighten that down. It's kind of interesting because then this spins until you tighten it down and then you can't spin that anymore because the action of the screw pushing against the rod also pushes against that part of the depth stop. But something I learned, this notch here is for, oop, I got that on backwards. Here we go. So this round notch is for clearing this screw that holds the base on. So you can see that notch right there. Just set this for some arbitrary depth. 
and then I'll refine that once I get the other part of the sash iron in there. Uh, this notch, I'm not 100% sure. They said something about there being a, like, oh, what did they call it? It was a bevel gauge or bevel something for sash. So not 100% sure, but that might slot onto here just because that seems odd otherwise. So don't fully know what that one is yet. <laughs> Working on that part. Okay, set that aside for now. Same kind of mounting mechanism in the fence for a blade. And that's exactly what it's for. It's for a blade. So this is the sash profile. Um, and what this will cut basically is a small fillet and then a quarter round and then you get the rest of the profile and then you get your rabbit here for where the glass would go. So this just goes just like the other one into here and then you can tighten that down. But what I did before and what you need to do is you line the bottom of the cutter up with bottom of this uh, kind of part of the fence, I guess. And so now that we've got that, whoop, not quite lined up. That lined up, all right. Okay, there's that. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do is loosen these just a hair. Oop, too much of a hair. And then that allows you to move this fence back and forth. And so this is how you can set the offset or how big of a fillet you have on your sash. So let's see. Yeah, I think that looks good. I don't know that that really matters per se. It's probably all some kind of either an accurate, you know, restoration profile so it matches or just whatever you feel like looks good. Okay, so then the fence can go onto the rods. So once again, there's the square rod and the round rod, so it's pretty hard to screw that up. And then I found that it works best if I just put that all the way up against this depth stop here. And now is where with that depth stop, I loosen it up and I put it just about the same height. So if we look at that, so the depth stop is just above that quarter round profile, roughly the same distance that I'm gonna have a fillet down here. So this little overhang is roughly the same as the depth for the depth stop. So that's where I set that. And then the next thing that I do is I loosen the fence up, leave it loose, and then I push that all the way over against that depth stop. There. So now we should be good to go. All right, I've just got a piece of pine in the workbench here held between two dogs under a, a nice uh, hold fast. And I've already waxed it some, but I just like to wax the fence and then the two bottoms and then a little bit on the side, just, just a little bit to kind of help it slide a little bit easier. And then just like any other combination plane, you push the fence over and just push forward and let it do the cutting for you. And you might also have to adjust the depth of cut just, just in case you're not actually getting everything you need to. So in this case, the sash iron isn't actually making contact at the moment. 
So I'm just going to tap that here. There we go. And something very much not happy on me here. What is it? Might be... No, that doesn't make sense. So now I'm taking too much of a cut, but uh, so the issue that I was having, why it was jamming up because I didn't notice that I had my iron set too far, the, the rabbiting iron um, was not, oh, that's way too shallow. <laughs> it wasn't cutting far enough over on the one skate, so the skate actually wasn't being completely covered by the iron, and because of that, it was hitting the bottom of it, so there we go. Got to make sure that that's where it needs to be. Then it works great. <laughs> Just a matter of getting everything all set up right, which sometimes is the trickiest part. We're gonna see what happens. I flipped it over. I'm gonna cut the other side of it. Kinda of feel like we're just gonna end up going right through on that groove, but we'll see. <laughs> Why not? Jam it up. Yeah, so if you hear that noise, you probably want to do this a little bit earlier <laughs> than what I just did. And now you can see we're all kinds of jammed up in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, we barely made that one, huh? Oop. So, yeah. <laughs> you know what a Stanley 45 slitter cutter is? It'd basically be used to do that. <laughs> so obviously this is a little bit on the narrow side for what you would want to use for window sash, but that's kind of the idea is that you've got your profile there. So we've got that, you know, little sash profile and the two rabbits for the glass on the backside. So that would be cutting sash with a fails patent plane. <laughs> 